All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the 19th of January, 2014, your video vlog of the day. It's nighttime. Been teaching for three days and, uh, you know, switched some things around just to make sure this video vlog was going to happen. And I'm fucking happy it's happening right now. I'm happy that it's happening. Let's talk a little bit. Let's talk about life, okay? Let's talk about life. It's been very exciting recently, so let's make shit happen here. Listen, first of all, let's go over a few stats I put up and the huge response to them. Number one, let's talk about this. If you took poison and fed your body poison, or you ate food that was rotten, right? You ate food that was poisonous. Think about it for a second. Your physical body is going to have a reaction to it. You might get a stomach ache. You might get sick, throw up, maybe get a fever. Why? Why? What's happening? Your body is trying to handle the poisonous elements that have now entered into it. Can you see that? Obviously, right? Not rocket science. None of us would walk around and eat anything rotten. All right. Pause there. Let's go to the next one. There are thoughts, thoughts, ideas that are poisonous. There are thoughts and ideas that are rotten. There are emotions that are literally poisonous. Emotions that are rotten. How do you know which ones they are? You see, this is the biggest problem. Is people, they act like they don't know. Shah. How do I know if that was a... Uh, and uh, poison. Isn't anger important to have? Shouldn't you be sad sometimes? Am I supposed to always be happy? Blah blah blah. Let's let's look at it. Let's have some insight. Let's have some insight into the subject. When you're angry, when you're sad, when you're upset, when you're regretting, blaming, when you're in shame, when you're upset, any unpleasantness, anything you would label bad, right? Every cell in your body and the chemistry of your body is dealing with that. Your body is literally going through a totally different chemical reaction, response, makeup than when you are feeling pleasurable feelings like cheerfulness, excitement, enthusiasm. Strong interest. Come on, bro. If you keep flying around me, you're going to die. I don't really like killing creatures, but sure as fuck not going to go around biting people. <sighs> Anyways. When you feel emotions, when you feel emotions that are pleasant or what you would consider good, now you could call that, you could call that cheerfulness, happiness. Those are just labels for what? For something that feels good to you. Your whole chemical makeup is different. Your face is different. You digest food different. You're welcome to do a little research on this. Science has now discovered what motherfuckers have known for 10,000 fucking years in India. Congratulations, science. Something that every fucking Buddhist monk would know. Something that every... Hindu ascetic would know. Something that every Sufi mystic from Persia would know. Your emotions are important. When you feel an emotion of love, man, you could fucking eat all kinds of shit. Your metabolism changes. You feel different. You could take on the world, right? Oh, I'm in love. I feel so strong. When you feel grief and sadness, you can't even have a fucking... Termite step on your toe. Oh, what happened? A termite walked over my big toe. Oh, my God. Everywhere I go, termites are walking on my toe. It hurts. You know, I've always been... Shut the fuck up, right? Shut the fuck up. There are emotions that are poisonous to you. Okay? If you eat, and you eat healthy foods, and you work your body out, you're going to have healthy body. If you project, project healthy emotions, <clears throat> create, create, the word means to cause, to exist. Did you get that? 
cause to exist, not effect of already existing. But when you create a good emotion, a good feeling, the chemistry in your body changes. Okay? And vice versa, when you create a bad feeling, you get the negative side effects. There's one more thing. What about thoughts? What about thoughts? If you don't watch the news for one week and don't read the newspaper paper for one week, you're going to feel different. I swear on my life to you. If you don't read the newspaper for one week, if you don't watch uh, the news for one week, stay away from the negativity they spew out there, you will feel different. I promise you from the bottom of my heart. I promise you. Poisonous thoughts. Poisonous thoughts. If you cut out the people around you who are constantly feeding your mind with poison, now you're like, what is that? You know, Listen, any sort of thought that makes you feel weaker, doubt yourself, basically makes you feel bad. It can be poison. Now sometimes, like let's say I'm a teacher, right? Obviously I am a teacher. Sometimes I have to tell somebody a truth that's been hidden from, hidden from them for a long time. But that's why they come to me. And that's an unpleasant truth. It doesn't feel good for me to turn to someone and say, listen, you need to, boom. And they're like, Ugh. I'm like, for real though. See, that part of you needs to fucking cut the fuck out. I've done it many times. I'll do it every day if I have to. I, as a teacher, can see it. So we gotta, we got to be aware of that. What I'm saying is the motherfuckers around you, that their level of interaction is constantly negative. Constantly negative. If you cut them out, if you cut out the newspaper, if you cut out the news, oh, I just realized newspaper. It's paper that tells you the fucking news, then you go watch the news on TV. Ugh. If you cut out those things in your life, you will totally start to feel different. You'll start to feel good. You'll start to feel good. Okay? It's actually easier than you think. And that's something that I want you to learn in this video. It's not difficult. You may think it's difficult. Only because you've been practicing the other way. And because you have pieces of shit around you. Like literally pieces of shit. They should walk around and they should smell like shit. They should look like shit. It should be like God took a shit and it started walking. Then you would know. You're like, oh, that dude's a piece of shit. <laughs> Problem is they, they smell good, look good. They, it's, it's for your own good. You know, when someone gives you advice about something that they know absolutely nothing about? Do you know how ignorant that is? Do you have, have you ever worked out the ignorance of someone who tries to advise you on something they don't know? Okay. I remember when I first started reading the book Dianetics. And I came across the teachings of L. Ron Hubbard. Who I highly recommend. And if you're asking a question... Am I a Scientologist? No, I'm not. Okay? I was for a short time, and then I'm not anymore, due to my own personal reasons. However, the teachings and writings of Aaron Hubbard were incredible, and they still are. The point is, when I started reading that, I got a lot of advice from people. Oh, but not one of them had ever fucking read the book. Not one of them had ever read the fucking book. And man, the spirit that I am has a fucking problem with people who try to enslave people. And I would confront them and I would say, did you read the book? Oh, I would never read that. Then don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. You're not in a position to talk about shit you don't know. Okay? You're not. You're not. All right, one more thing, which was another status I wrote on Facebook. I don't remember exactly, but basic idea was when people are walking around giving you advice, you should do this, you should do this. You know what? You know what? They've failed at being an example. They have failed at being an example. You see, my life is my example. If you know me, you know. You know. If you know me, you know what the fuck's up. I don't put nothing out that's not, that's not actually what it is. 
If you're going to give advice, you yourself need to be an example of it. Got it? Otherwise, shut the fuck up. I'm telling you that so you don't go around and like, oh, well, my best friend said I should break up with him. My best friend said I should get with her. My fucking uh, counselor said I should go take that class. Fuck your counselor. Fuck your best friend. They don't know shit. Is your counselor also the profession that your counselor is suggesting to you? No. You need to go talk to the people who are in that profession and talk to them about it. Was your best friend with your boyfriend or girlfriend the whole time so they can advise you about that person? Maybe they were, so you need to fucking go ask them, okay? But if they weren't, then they need to shut the fuck up because they don't know the other person the way that you know the other person. And they don't know you the way that person knows you. So they can lead by example or they can go and fucking wipe their own ass with their opinion because that's what it's good for. Okay? Next topic. Don't you think it's time we start to feel good? Like, let's think about it for a second. Look at your day today, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> Did your team lose today in football? Boo-hoo. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> Grow up, dude. Did your team lose today? Are you sad? Was it a good game? Did you guys give it every... <laughs> Did you guys give it everything you had today? You and your fucking football team. Did you give it everything you had when you were sitting there watching TV? Did you, did you exert all the effort you could? Maybe if you'd exert a little bit more effort as a fan, they would have won. How's that? <laughs> Don't you think it's time we feel good in our days? And, and get rid of the idea that feeling good comes from outside circumstances. That if that team wins or loses or if... The sun comes up and it's not raining or if it's not cloudy or, or fucking if, 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 uh, if Jack farts or doesn't fart, you're going to be happy. Like, come on now. Don't you think it's time where you take a little control and you say, I actually want to feel good. I want to feel pleasant. Oh, man. I barely slept in two days. Tonight, we'll sleep. Tonight, we sleep. <laughs> it, reminds me of, it reminds me of 300, you know. Tonight, we dine in hell. Ooh. <laughs> you, you know, man, I, I grew up in a, in a tough culture. I, a warrior. This, I, I, live, I live the way of the warrior. That, that's me. Okay? Not the warrior you think. Not the soldier who will just go shoot whoever they tell him. Not the warrior who gets in the ring and is going to show how tough he is. I live the warrior's way. There's a difference. Okay? In the tradition of the old masters. Anyways. And I think it's funny when tonight we dine in hell. You always got to be hella serious about that. Like, I think the way he should have said it, he should have been like, tonight we dine in hell. And then he should have been like, ah, just kidding. <laughs> it would have been great. Anyways, if you're, if you're just listening to this on audio and you're not watching it, like if your name is MJ, a.k.a. Raven, you should be watching this right now. Huh? You like the little shout out I gave you right now? Because you missed my little faces I just made. You probably laugh and you're like, oh, I brought your hand to your face. And you're like, oh my God, does he know that? Because I know everything. Okay, listen. Let's wrap this up. Don't you think it's time we feel good? Should you not start focusing on feeling good now? Do you need a fucking reason besides the fact that you're goddamn alive right now? I like the word goddamn and alive right behind each other. Uh, isn't it enough that you're alive that you should just feel good? Do you need a fucking reason? I have a reason. Here's your reason. If tomorrow you wake up and you open your eyes and the sun, the sun is somewhere in the sky, I want you to feel good. Because the sun still was there and it didn't fucking go away and the whole fucking world didn't turn into ice. Or it didn't fucking explode and kill us all. Now, if that happens, then we'll have to deal with it after death. But if that happens, I want you to feel good. You wanted a fucking reason. The goddamn sun came up. Good job. If you open your fucking eyes and you get up and you go, Oh my God, I'm still in this fucking form and here I am. I want you to feel good. I don't give a fuck. You wanted a reason. There's the reason. Okay? Or you go the route of, I don't need a reason to feel good. Because I am life. I am existence. I am fucking life. So I'm going to fucking feel good. And if I feel good, then people around me are going to feel good. 
And the things I put out are going to be good feeling things. I will put out good feeling music, good feeling videos, good feeling everything. When I teach, people around me are going to feel good. Why? Because I feel good. Maybe you should start focusing on feeling good. I just got a message in the fucking 175 fucking messages of the day. But it's somebody that I know. That I don't really know her well. I know who she is and shit and she messaged me. Bottom line was, do you think it's possible to not be depressed without medication? I'm not going to talk about your medication or not because I'm not a doctor. And I'm not going to go there with it. I'm going to tell you, is it possible to not be depressed? Yes. How about this one? Is it possible to be happy? How about you think about, is it possible to be happy? Have you ever been happy in your life, ever? Did you ever have one fucking moment of happiness in your miserable fucking years of life? Did you have one moment of happiness? Oh, you did? Uh, there was a moment? Guess what? You can be happy then. Because there is your potential to be happy. You just fucking want to be miserable. I don't want to be miserable. Then why are you saying it all miserable shit? Say it in a happy way. Say, I don't want to be miserable. Then I'll be like, you're happy, right? You'll be like, I'm not happy because you look happy. I'm actually miserable because you're making yourself miserable. Whoa, we're in this weird fucking puzzle of a rush that you can't fucking get out of. That's right. That's right. Don't you think it's time we feel good? I think it is. I think it is. You know, when I breathe like that and I look to this side, which is, I think, your left or right, I don't know, you know bonus pieces coming up. Bonus! You guys love the bonuses. Bonus! I used to know a guy in junior high. His name was Jonas something. Sixth grade, Campbell Middle School. Brother, you may be watching. Your nickname, you were a skater. Your nickname was Boner. You <laughs> you would make everybody call you boner. If you're watching this, get a hold of Arash motherfucking Divazar, bro. Because that's the question I had to ask you. Fucking boner. You're always so angry. I wonder if you're still angry, boner. I hope you're not. I hope you're living well. I liked you. I thought you were a cool cat. Anyways. Bonus piece. You ready for it? Let's do it. So obviously, if you've been following along... Every once in a while, a hater shows up, and I handle them. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I ignore them. But now I'm about to break something down for you. First of all, I don't need any advice from anybody telling me, just ignore the haters. Because I guarantee you, I have more than you do. So when you have as many haters as I do, and as many fans as I do, you are welcome to advise me. Until then, you're not in the position to advise me. Sit back. Until you have someone hate on you. See what that feels like. Maybe we can talk. Okay? Oh, I've had people hate on me. You have no fucking idea until you put out this much truth and affect this many people. And I'm just getting started. But anyways. First of all, I don't need that fucking advice. If I am intelligent enough to put out the things I put out. If I'm awake enough as a being to put out the truth I put out. Now 80 something videos every day. Some fucking... A video blog, forget the fact that I teach every fucking other thing in the world too, just this channel. Then I'm probably intelligent enough to know that advice, okay? So then why do I take the time to do it? A, so you learn, because I never had a role model on how to do it. I think it's important we know how to handle bullies. B, which is more important, B, boom, boom, I wish there was an A, B on it. Are you ready for this big, whopping BAM? I'm about to fucking hit you with some truth. Do you know that motherfucking Hitler was a hater? Hitler was a hater, was he not? Was he not? Shouldn't somebody have slapped that motherfucker across his face and spun his head the other way? The first moment he was like, fuck Jews, fuck you, bow! Why'd you hit me? Because you're a fucking hater. If you say that shit again, I'll fucking kick you in the nuts. Dude, you all serious, man. I'm just this little guy with a little fucking mustache. I don't care. Don't you fucking say that shit, you fucking little hater comment. Go fucking write it in your diary and then go fucking punch yourself in the face. But don't say that shit to the world. That's a hater. 
isn't the racist like the the racist not not the one who's just like oh you know all black people this all white people this all persians this. there's a lot of truth to that shit right all persians drive fucking mercedes and bmws yeah all persians have big noses yeah i don't know why yours truly doesn't but i have a gorgeous mom and dad maybe that's why but you know a lot of those stereotypes are truth to them right a lot of them are true a lot of them are true okay that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the standard stereotype that we all kind of like laugh at. If it was a comedian, you're like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Women can't drive. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's some truth to that, isn't there? Isn't there? For sure. But I'm talking about the racist. The fucker who's just like hates black people. Hates white people. Hates all Middle Easterns. I hate. I, if I could get rid of them, I fucking would. U.S. of A. That guy's a fucking hater. And that guy needs to be handled. When you see me handle someone, it's a motherfucker in that spirit. You get it? I handle the dangerous fucking hater. The one who's been bullying others. The one who I can read into his communication because I swear to God, if there's anything that I am, I am a fucking warlock of words. You don't even know what I can do by listening to someone talk. It's the motherfucker that by them talking or typing, I read into their communication and I go, that piece of shit has been fucking people up and now I am their fucking karma. So bring it on, you fuck, because I have been designed to fucking just send you out of this world, you fuck. And they always come to their senses if you keep watching, because I'm not afraid of them. And neither should you be. And somebody should have stopped all those evil motherfuckers that fucked up our races and our planet and all the people that start the wars, they're haters. People that start wars are haters and they should be stopped, right? Shouldn't someone be like, no, I don't think so. War equals hate. Simple. That's it. That's it. Reminder on my face, where is it? It says war. It doesn't say raw if you've seen it backwards. Okay? That's why. Maybe you need to start handling some haters in your life. So that your relationship doesn't break later because you didn't handle a hater. Because it does. Because it does. Certain things you should absolutely take offense to. Wars are offensive. Racism is offensive. People trying to destroy and ruin your relationships are offensive. People trying to destroy your careers and your lifestyle are fucking offensive. And they should be handled. And they should shut the fuck up. And they should know that it's actually not okay to go around doing that. And that's why I handle a hater. And fuck a hater. And you should fucking understand that. Okay? There's your fucking bonus piece. Bonus piece.